15 people arrested over an attack on a mosque in May in KwaZulu-Natal continued behind closed doors in the Verulam Magistrates Court north of Durban today. They made their first appearance yesterday. The suspects are facing 14 charges, including murder, attempted murder, and contravention of the Terrorism Act. They were all arrested last Friday. They're also accused of a spate of bomb-making devices that were placed at shopping malls in KwaZulu-Natal between March and August this year. The media was not allowed inside the courtroom. The Hawks spokesperson, Hangwani Mlaudzi, said that the court appearance was in camera to avoid jeopardizing the investigation. Well, for more on this story, we now cross to our reporter, Swonga Gonke Mbata, who's uh, there live for us. Thanks very much for joining us, uh, Swonga. Uh, give us an update of uh, how things have gone so far. A good afternoon, Peter. Members of the media continue to wait outside the Verulam Magistrate Court. I guess the best that we're waiting for is some sort of an update as well from the Hawks spokesperson, national spokesperson, um, Brigadier Hangwani Mlaudzi, because he's currently inside. Like you had mentioned that the first appearance was indeed yesterday, but not much happened yesterday, as the only thing that transpired was, of course, the powering of members of the media, the public, as well as the family of the victim who fell victim to the mosque attack in May and today continued to be the same fate that we experienced where the public, family and members of the media were barred from participating in any of the proceedings. But during the day we were trying to get a hold of the spokesperson, trying to keep updated as to what's happening inside and the best that we could get was the, uh, a, a short adjournment had to happen earlier this morning because apparently the suspect had um, requested food saying that they're very hungry and they could not proceed with today's proceedings having not eaten anything all day so it had to be adjourned for a short while and food came a few hours later and there was very specific request only halal food had to be requested in and they had to wait even further and now the proceedings have resumed we now wait for the brigadier to brief the media outside and what we're hearing is that there has been quite a number of arguments between the state and defense as of yesterday there seems to be a number of issues that the defense wants to be addressed before going any further there was the issue of the identity parade which was of course requested by the state um, which is happening there was also another request for an interpreter and an interpreter indeed did come this morning to facilitate that process and an interpreter to facilitate Swahili the Swahili language so she did indeed come and the that um, portion of the proceedings did happen. She quickly left after the proceedings were adjourned for a short while for the meal preps. And now they're back again. The matter has resumed. Um, we can only find out after it has adjourned what had transpired as we continue to wait outside. But as of yesterday, even today, Peter, the family continues to come um, worried, of course, of the members of their family. And of course, beyond the families of the victim, we are seeing families from the alleged suspect even though upon trying to speak to them they did mention that they are not willing to speak to the media at this point um, they are just also waiting to find out if indeed their loved ones are amongst those who are allegedly suspect uh, that are appearing inside this co the courtroom so until that point they continue to wait along with the media just outside here in court um, we'll only find out the latest once um, the brigadier comes out to make an official update for members of the media outside court. Peter? Uh, Sbonga, perhaps one uh, final question. Has it been made clear why the media is not allowed uh, to cover this proceedings from inside court? Yesterday when we tried to probe the matter, we were told that the NPA had requested more time to conduct identity parade and the estimated time we were given was a maximum of seven days. But it was not really an official comment from the court itself as we were told that it was the court's order. And earlier this morning we tried to probe the matter and find out from court management the details behind the order. But unfortunately we could not succeed. But what we did manage to get is that um, the 
court order stands is sustained until the magistrate sees it fit that it can now be conducted on a public platform with members of the public participating, the family, as well as the media being able to report on the matter. We will remember, Peter, that this is a matter of national interest. It's a high-profile case. There's a lot of heavy charges that are faced by the suspects and the, the Hawks as well as the NPA did highlight that um, no information must be um, leaked, no information must be shared as it might jeopardize the case. But then the question remains in terms of media freedom um, as well as public interest must also be considered. But at this very moment we will find out once we start speaking to the Brigadier and get clarity on that matter in terms of what is more important, um, public information, alerting the public for what's happening, reporting on matters or state security um, is also at play so we have to weigh those two elements um, when um, approaching this matter. Peter? Okay, Swonga, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks very much indeed. That's uh, Swonga uh, Mbata reporting there from us uh, from uh, KwaZulu-Natal. Right.